choosing a retirement date can feel daunting to some people. It feels like it's a very long-term commitment after years of having your career. And there are some things that you should consider before you make this big decision. So in this episode, we're going to cover five things to consider before you set that retirement date. This is the Money Master Podcast from Brindle and Bay Wealth Management with Tori Tenhagen, Connie Davis, and certified financial planner, Nick Davis. Welcome to the Money Master Podcast, everyone. Glad to have you here with us today. Uh, I'm Connie, and we have Nick and Tori here, of course, with us. And today we're going to talk about when can I retire and things for you to consider. But before we get into that, so it is summertime, which... If your kids are grown and out of the house, and if you're listening to this podcast, they probably are, summer might not mean too much different for you. If you're retired, it's always summer, right? Maybe the grandkids, maybe (laughs) they just got the children out of the house and the grandkids are uh, coming around. That's true. Grandkids change summer a little bit. Yes. Yeah, I know. Sometimes we have, well, when our kids were small, they would spend some time with grandparents in the summer to relieve us parents yeah we are finishing that season though we 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 just non-stop baseball right now non-stop ffa our daughter does she raises animals and uh just uh it's like you'll miss it when it's gone but um yeah it definitely keeps you busy for sure yeah we thought we would get a little break in the summer from running kids everywhere but Oh, no, nope, we were wrong. <laughs> busier than school time for us. So we are envious of some of the seasons of life that some of our clients are in because they're they're past that. They're it's going to be liberating and sad maybe when mm-hmm. you're an empty nester. Yep. Yes. Lots of different seasons of life. So um, today we're going to talk about the season of retirement and moving into retirement and things to consider. So you know it's a big shift from wealth accumulation to beginning to start spending that savings and actually entering into retirement. It is a very big emotional decision and a process that you go through. So, you know, we can't reduce uncertainty, but we can be wise and we can be prepared. So today let's talk about a couple of those things. I think that's good that you said you can't reduce uncertainty. You know, we all want that magic certainty button that you can just push and, you know, it's like, give me the black and white answer. But that's not going to happen when it comes right. to spending your money. Even if you had it in the most safe place possible, you'd be worried about that institution going under, right? right. Um, so maybe there are things that make you feel more secure, right? But I mean, ultimately, there's things that we can control and things that we can't control. And, and the just, things we can't control, you just kind of build in as part of their plan. You yeah. know those, those might happen. You build them in yeah. as a possibility right. so, that, so that the uncertainty is planned for. Yep. Not what it is necessarily, but that, that it will happen. Right. The more you plan for it, I think it reduces your uncertainty. And that's why people listen to shows like this, because you want to reduce your uncertainty. You're trying, a lot of people listen to us because they're like, well, I've been just researching and I'm just now getting out of my, you know, into that phase where I'm very concerned about it and I'm listening to everything I can listen to, learning as much as I can possibly learn. Why are you doing that? Because we're trying to just reduce our uncertainty. And I think if you can accept the fact that you're never going to find that thing that feels exactly right, but it is going to feel right in terms of, okay, I've done all the due diligence that I can possibly do. Now let's go and enjoy our lives. Well, and we talk about that in our investing principles and financial planning principles is that we expect volatility. We know it's part of yeah. of this ride. So it's part of their plan as well. Yeah. You have to build it in. So we've got five things for you today. And uh, these are five things to consider before you kind of set that date? Yeah, so let's jump in. So the first one, know what it costs to maintain your lifestyle. So what do you mean exactly by that? Well, you can't even begin to start to figure out when you can retire, how much money you need if you don't know what your lifestyle costs. What you're currently spending. Currently spending and what things are going to be coming up in retirement. I mean, that's, that's the first step in our plan that yeah. we sit down with people and say, okay, what's your budget? What's what, your budget? What, do, what do you need yeah, to that, spend per month? That word that nobody likes to no. hear, they cover the earth's budget. <laughs> and we hear that. We hear, I have yeah. no idea. I don't yeah. want to, I don't, I, we don't look at it right now because we have so much money coming in from jobs and things that we just, we can live our life. But now I actually have to sit down and we <laughs> just spend our money. Out. Like we've always yeah. made more than more money than we spend. So we're okay. And we resist it. And I hear that a lot. Like we resist looking at the budget. Most people do. 
Yeah. The good news is you don't have to look at it all the time. It's actually very relieving to go through the season where you figure it out and then maybe check back in with it from time to time. But questions that you might ask are what expenses are going to go away when I'm no longer working? What new expenses might I have? What expenses come with the lifestyle shifts? So what in different seasons are yeah. you going to need? Yeah. And there are different methods of doing that. We should probably do an episode on that. There's there's a top-down approach. There's a the bottom-up approach just to figuring out how much money you spend. And so, but I think that's very, the, the first of five is if you don't know what you're spending, then you really can't yeah, figure can't out when you're going to stop working. Yeah. So start there, know what your, your current budget is. Okay, good. And second, know how you want to spend retirement. So not spend money, but spend your days. How do you, how do you want to wanna, spend your you, time? Yeah. You want to enjoy your retirement. There's, you don't want to set a date and be miserable. You want to know what you're going to do to enjoy your time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, studies show that a lot of people replace eight hours of work with eight hours of TV. If you're not very intentional, who do you want to spend your time with? How are you contributing? And, um, we've asked members this too, of, you know, do you find that you're busy in retirement or in some are like, I'm more busy than when I was yeah. working because I'm volunteering and I'm doing fun stuff. And I know, yeah. but percentage wise, I would say that's maybe 20 or 30% of the people that we see retire. Like they're like, Oh yeah, I'm doing this stuff that I said I was going to do, or I knew what I was going to do. But that's the intentionality behind it. Right. Of I'm doing something that I care about. Yeah. Maybe it was easy for them because they just knew, Oh, I love kayaking and I'm going to spend all my time right. doing kayaking and creating groups for kayaking. And Oh, I love volunteering or you know, Hey, I'm going to be on this nonprofit organization or you just naturally melt into running grandchildren around. I mean, you hear that a lot, mm -hmm. but or uh, helping elderly family members. Yeah. But this could be an unwelcome surprise when you stop working is that it's like, man, I don't, I don't know how, you know, how I want to spend my time in retirement, especially how I'm going to spend my time around my spouse. If we were always apart all day long and now we're together again, you know, we talk, there, we've talked about that in other episodes as well. Mm -hmm. The point is I think be intentional about really rehearsing retirement a little bit, being intentional about maybe taking some time and asking, practicing what it would be like to not work and spend some time doing some of your hobbies or, you know, hanging out with the people you think you're going to hang out with when you're no longer working. That could go a long way. Yeah. That's just as important as writing a budget. You know, like you need to sit down and think yeah. about what you're going to actually do. Yeah. Right. And um, it's, and it's helpful to do that because then you can leave space in your retirement budget to make sure you include, you know, maybe you want to pick up I don't know, tennis lessons or what's that new thing? Pickleball. pickleball. <laughs> the new thing. Everybody, it's the, all the rage. Pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's fun until it's not, right? Because pickleball, everybody's getting so intense about it. So competitive, it seems like. Yeah. I was thinking. You know who you are if you're listening. <laughs> when, when we moved into our area, you know, our neighborhood, there's pickleball courts and like hardly anybody was there. And I would be able to go and just mess around. Well, I can't go now because it's, yeah, full. it's, it's busy all the time. Get your, get your time slot in, Connie. <laughs> I'm walking like at six o'clock in the morning and I hear clunk, 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 <laughs> clunk, 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 because people are playing. Yep. Yep. And late at night too. Um, okay. Well, good. Next one, prepare for variable or large expenses. What type of variable or large expenses might we think about? Well, I think it's important to even just say that, like to distinguish your income from var here's my variable, here's my fixed effect. It's very, very helpful to say, here's everything that's not going to change. My property tax is going to be pretty close to what it is. My health insurance premium is pretty close. Um, my, you know, car payments can be pretty close, but my variable expenses, well, how much I spend on vacation, how much I'm going to purchase an RV. I'm yeah. Gonna, how might, many, you might buy a golf cart, but how many, um, subscriptions do you have to Hulu and all these other places, uh, do you want to remove the ads on YouTube for $15 a month or whatever it is? Well, and we find that helpful for people too, to visualize that. Okay. Here's your monthly budget, just like day to day gas, food, groceries, but then separating those larger expenses out because you know, people say, well, that, that monthly budget includes some vacations sometimes, but we don't always do that. And that's hard to not see separate yeah. it out like as a larger separate expense. Yes. And by separating it out, it really does help you to enjoy it a lot more because it's First of all, you know which lever you can pull if you need to. If if things start going bad in the world or with your plan, you're like, okay, you know, I feel like I'm spending more than I need to live, and I know I could shrink back if I had to, and that allows you to enjoy that money a lot more. So, yeah, prepare for those variable and large expenses, but also, what could go wrong, right? Like having a plan in that budget for that unexpected large healthcare cost or 
something like your air conditioning goes out and it costs you ten thousand yeah, dollars we hear that a lot is a big worry for a lot of retirees is i'm just worried something in my house is going to break that's gonna be really expensive like i think I just... yeah the more contingencies you have so when we build a plan we build that in there because you want to have all those things built in so that you're not you don't feel like you're hanging by a thread when you're taking your income from your portfolio for the rest of your life so sometimes it's just helpful to try to think through what types of expenses could i have or where can i have money that's it going to be for my potential large expenses to know where that's going to come from. Right. And two more things actually that we can um, consider. Know how much of your income is stable. So you want to back out, you know, so if you know you want to spend $100,000 a year, well, back out Social Security, back out your pension, pension yep. and figure out what that gap is. So Do you have an annuity payout of some sort that you plan for guaranteed income later? Like if, whatever if you, you won have the lottery, coming in. If you want America's Got Talent and you're getting a payment over 40 years, then, you know, put that in there. I always thought it was funny because we, we used to love watching America's Got Talent before COVID, you know, and um, it, it's funny. They say they're going to give you a $1 million prize, but then when they they put the small print on, you can see it's over. It's with an annuity over 40 years. And I always kind of tell my family, that million dollars is probably like 400,000 or 350,000, depending upon the discount rate that they used over 40 years. But it sounds good, especially if they're going to split it between like three contestants. It's like, oh, oh yeah, we all get a thousand bucks, you know, Yay. <laughs> a month for, <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, good. And the last one, evaluate your feelings towards market returns and uncertainty. Well, that's what we talked about at the beginning, that uncertainty. Yeah, that's huge. How do you feel about the market and uncertainty? Tori and I were talking, we were just building a plan for a family um, just this week. And they, when they retire, they're going to have a disproportionate amount of money coming out of their, their portfolio for the first five or six years because Social Security isn't turning on and because they're younger. So they're paying for health care to bridge that gap. And, you know, they're also made comments that said, not only are we moderate conservative, but we're also not happy about losing a lot of money. Uh, and so meaning more than most people. So that means that there had to be a little bit of a unique thing built into their plan, meaning there had to be some extra short term bonds and cash built into their plan, so that they're not going to arrive at retirement in three years, which is when they're going to retire, and feel bad about taking distributions out just because that window of time of higher percentage withdrawal. Now, after five or six years, their social security turns on and they have something else paid off and it's actually you know much more reasonable. What's nice is that they're able to do that. They're not just sticking to, I have to only spend X amount every year. They're actually able to build it to be flexible, but then taking into consideration, how do I feel about the, the variability of the market. That's yeah, not true for every person. How do I feel if I have to pull money from an account that's down? Because you might. Right. That's other people, the reality of it. Other people, yeah, you can't plan for that forever. The only way you can plan for that forever, you're not going to like the, the, the downside, the consequences to having everything into where, in a place where you're, you're never going to have anything bad happen or challenging happen. But I think in general, you know, you may or may not be that way. So somebody else may be more, you know, less, less prone to that. Maybe they are taking a smaller percentage of their total assets to live on and they feel differently about the market. So their plan can be built a little bit differently. So you, you got to consider all these things, all five of these things, know what your lifestyle is going to cost you, know how you're going to spend your time, prepare for large and variable expenses. So you'll feel good about, you know, you're not hanging by a thread when you go to retire and, you know, know how much of your income is stable and how much of it do you want to be stable which, you know, you can affect that by growing your social security larger or taking a bigger pension option. And then the, the last one is just really evaluate how you feel about market variability and market returns and um, make sure your plan is built to, um, you know, to a accommodate lot for that. that yeah. yeah, accommodate for that. Yeah. Well, if you're in that place where you're getting close to choosing your retirement date, I hope that you found these helpful. We appreciate you listening and we would love for you to take a moment and leave a review on our podcast so that way others can find and listen to us as well. Thanks for joining.
Nick Davis is an investment advisor representative of Brindle and Bay Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. This show is for informational purposes only. Any exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered financial advice or recommendation to buy or sell a financial vehicle. You should consult a qualified financial, tax, or legal professional before taking any action. This program is not endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Insurance licensed in Texas, number 1188639. Brindle and Bay Wealth Management is affiliated with Brindle and Bay Financial Advisors.